Well, 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 folks, we have another computer video. It also appears that I kind of sliced up my invoice. Whoops. So let's check it out. I decided to get a new potential main laptop. I like the X140e a lot, but it turns out that that thing has really has uh, really good battery life. So it that will make a better school laptop than a main laptop. There's also the issue of the graphics power uh, on it being good, but not optimal for what I use the graphics for on that laptop. But mostly the battery life. So I decided to get a laptop that's a little bit more substantial for. Um, for my main uses. And a lot of that will have to do with video editing and Second Life primarily. And you'll see how that theme plays out. Okay, does this use a real adapter? I hope it does. Yes, it does use a real Lenovo adapter. Good. So they sent me a real one, not a fake one. Yay. All right. Let me unwrap this and I'll show you what I got. And this, folks, is what we have. You see, what I did was I scoured eBay and I looked for a Lenovo ThinkPad T420, that's what this is, with a, um, that happened to have Quadro NVS 4200 graphics. And I found one. Just one. <laughs> so I went and got it now before that thing went away. Let's take a look at it. She's a beaut. An absolute beaut. I think that's my hand smudges from earlier. Whoops. This thing is in phenomenal shape. I actually thought the keyboard would be in way worse shape than it. It looked worse in the pictures, but it looks beautiful. Here, it just looks like it needs a basic cleaning, and it's fine. Uh, the trackpad has a little bit of wear. I don't know if you can see it. A little bit of wear up in this area. Track point feels good. Keyboard is really solid on this. It doesn't flex at all. Contrast that with the Dells I've used, where the keyboard flexes like crazy in the middle. This is this keyboard is really solid. That's one thing I like to talk about is the keyboard. You may know on my X140e that the keyboard is the island style. See, that's the newer uh, style of keyboard. That that computer is newer than this one is, way newer. Uh, this is a last of its kind. The X220 and the T420 are two ThinkPads I know that were sort of the last of their kind to have the old style keyboard. So if you like this old style keyboard, the T420 or the uh, the X220 are the laptops you want to get. Uh, I mean, the island style keyboard is fine. It feels it feels good. It just doesn't feel the same as this. Really, really nice keyboard on this. So this laptop should be great. It has the fingerprint reader, track point, and trackpad. So it has a pretty full package. And this one also has a webcam this time, unlike my X201. Uh, so I can do Skype on this no problem and actually have video without having to plug in a camera, which is very nice. Looks like it has two speakers on the side here. On the side, which is nice, so it'll fire up instead of from the bottom. Um, volume controls up here, media buttons. You can actually mute the microphone, which is a really nifty switch, actually. Think Vantage button, power button. A really unusual looking delete key up here. <laughs> it's kind of big print screen, all, you know, all your typical stuff. The escape key is a similar form factor as that delete key. That's interesting. All right, and the screen, I don't know how big the screen is. We'll find out when we turn it on. So let me look at the spec sheet here and I'll tell you what's in this thing. This is a ThinkPad T420 with a Core i5-2520M, which is a really good Core i5 because it has the HD 3000 graphics. This is a Sandy Bridge machine, by the way. As you can see, I love me my Sandy Bridge. <laughs> Uh, 2.5 gigahertz Core i5. It comes with 4 gigs of RAM. I'm hoping that's one stick so that um, I can just upgrade it to 8 gigs really easily. 500 gig hard drive with Windows 7 on it. Uh, that 500 gig hard drive is going to be upgraded to a 1 terabyte uh, hybrid drive that I happen to have. So this thing will be a 1 terabyte machine. I would put that, that 480 gig SSD in here, but I need more space than that for... Um, you know, on-the-go video editing and stuff like that, so uh, hard drive it is. So, that's the specs of the laptop from the spec sheet. So let's check out the machine itself. Get your fan right there, it looks pretty clean in there. VGA connector, which is always good for old projectors and stuff. Ethernet, display port, 
USB. Looks like the hard drive is here. It's not missing the screw. That's good. Not much to see on the front at all, except for the uh, thing that opens the latch here. On this side, you have the optical drive. Yes, an optical drive, folks. You get a headset jack, which is probably a three-pole, 3.5 millimeter. I'm sure you can get an adapter to get separate plugs there. Um, I'm guessing, I have, I have no clue what this is here. Uh, below that's an SD card and a wireless switch, but this, this, I don't know. Is that Express card? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, get USB, eSATA plus USB, so I can use an eSATA port on here, which is really nice for hard drive backups and stuff like that. And one of the, my favorite things about this T420 is it has FireWire. That is awesome. That means I can use, uh, digital 8 and mini DV camcorders with this uh, computer and edit with them, which is pretty sweet. Since Windows Live Movie Maker actually does deinterlacing properly, I can just use that. And it looks like you have a powered USB here. I don't know if that's 3 or what. Uh, I don't know if USB 3 is even on this laptop at all, I'll tell you the truth. There's the battery in the back. It's not the extended battery, it's just a regular battery. Here's your power connector and another side of that vent here. Yeah, I don't know if this has USB 3 or not. I have no idea. Here's the bottom of the machine. Fairly clean. RAM is under here. We'll take a look at that in a second. There's the dot connector. And, of course, the battery. And I think the product key is hiding under the battery. So let me actually look. Yes, it is. <laughs> product key is under the battery. And it's a Windows 7 Pro COA. So that's what I'll be installing on here. That will upgrade to Windows 10 once that comes out, so that'll be just fine. Uh, so let's see what kind of RAM and hard drive are in this thing. Let me take it apart a little bit since we're going to upgrade it anyway. Yeah, this is one of those ThinkPads that puts RAM under the keyboard and on the bottom to keep things thin. So the RAM is probably under the keyboard, so we'll see what it is at some point. It's 1333, I know that, so I just need to get another 4 gig 1333 stick, and it'll be perfectly good. So... That'll be the next upgrade for this thing, and I think it'll be just fine. Uh, four gigs should be uh, should be survivable for a while, but uh, you just can't open too many tabs in Firefox or something to, to eat up the RAM. So, yeah, that's that's interesting. So I'll get some thirteen. I'll get a single four gig stick of thirteen thirty three, and this machine will be all good. Now let's take a look and see what kind of hard drive they put in here. All right, it looks like the mounting system for hard drives in this ThinkPad isn't any different than some of the older ones I've used. Ah, it's a Hitachi drive. Very nice. Uh, 7200 RPM, 500 gigs. That's a good drive. That's a very good drive. It's from 2011, so it probably came with the machine. Because 2011 is around when Sandy Bridge laptops were popular. So this is probably the stock hard drive. That's pretty nice. Cool. Yeah, it has a Lenovo part number on it, so this is a uh, stock Hitachi drive. Seems like a lot of Lenovo's come with these uh, Hitachi drives, and they, they're pretty reliable, too. Uh, reliable and quiet, just the way I like a hard drive. So let's stick that back in there, and we'll boot this up and see what kind of windows they threw on this thing for me. All right, let's give this thing a shot. There, now it turns on. Let's see if I can hit the Think Vantage button. And get to the uh, BIOS. All right, here we go. BIOS is from 2011. There's your uh, Intel Core i5-2520M. Has a UEFI BIOS, which is nice. Wake on LAN, AC only. <laughs> USB, always on USB. Okay. Keyboard, track point. You can actually turn the track point and the trackpad off individually, so I might actually shut the track the touchpad off. You can swap the function and control keys, which is important for people who like the control button over here and the function key over there. So that's pretty nice. You can actually turn that off. You can make the ThinkPad numlock independent or synchronized with a keyboard you plug into it. That's very nice. Graphics device. You can actually switch between NVIDIA, the NVIDIA graphics 
or the integrated graphics in the BIOS. That's very nice. I like that a lot. Uh, NVIDIA Optimus mode. So you can just use integrated graphics or discrete graphics or NVIDIA Optimus mode. And I'm guessing Optimus is when it uses it on the fly. Optimus mode runs as integrated graphics mode and discrete graphics mode as enabled on demand. So yeah, Optimus does it on demand. Optimus should only be selected if you're using Windows 7. So if you're using Windows 7 or higher, I guess that's what you use. Power. Intel Speed Step Technology. Power Management. Express Card. I guess that is Express Card, like 3, 4 maybe. Because it's so small. That little slot on the side that I couldn't figure out. SATA uses 8HCI or compatibility. <laughs> I'm guessing compatibility is uh, IDE mode. CPU, you can turn hyper-threading off if you need to. AMT. I have no idea what AMT is, so I'm not going to mess with that. Fingerprint. Memory protection. Interesting. Virtualization technology. That should be enabled. IO port access. You can shut things off individually. That's really nice. You can shut the microphone off, the eSATA port, Ultra Bay, all that stuff on and off. Anti theft. Intel Active Technology. Current setting. I'm going to uh, shut that off. <laughs> CompuTrace. Let's disable that. <laughs> uh, Alright. Let's boot it up and see what kind of. Uh, Windows image they threw on this machine. That's, that uh, keyboard light's really bright. <laughs> Holy crap. Alright, there you go. Little hard drive light down there. I've noticed this doesn't have as many lights on the uh, bezel here as uh, older ThinkPads do. Even my X201, which is just one generation below this has a ton of lights on it for like charging and the hard drive and Bluetooth and all that stuff. Whereas this one doesn't seem to. Windows 7 Professional. It's taken a while. There it goes. Oh, look at that background. Isn't that nice? Oh, the battery's at 2%. Wow. Yeah, no wonder. Five hours to fully charged. All right, let's see what kind of windows they threw on this machine. Oh, they actually threw the proper version on here. 64-bit. So this is a fresh install. Excellent. Excellent. Cool stuff. So, yeah, it looks like they just threw an image on this machine and uh, sent it out the door. Looks cool to me. So the next order of business is to upgrade the RAM in this thing. So let's check out the device manager real quick. I just want to see about the NVIDIA. Yeah, it has both. Intel HD 3000 and NVS 4200M. So this machine defi de definitely is the hybrid. It's it's basically the Lenovo equivalent of the Dell Latitude E6420 I made a video of not that long ago. That also was basically the same setup as this. Same CPU and everything. Same machine, really. Both of those are this. Both of these are the same machine, except that this one... I think has a better keyboard and an, uh, a nicer design. So there you go. Uh, so I'm going to play with this a little while. I'm going to try 3D on the Quadro uh, for my for what I do. I plan to use Second Life, and I plan to use it for fast video rendering on PowerDirector. Uh, so hopefully I can get that to work just fine on here. Should be should be pretty good. All right, I've made a few changes to the ThinkPad T420. Uh, I have tested uh, Second Life and uh, 
some other 3D stuff on here. Quadra works great, although the air coming out of that vent does get rather hot, but works great. No problems with it at all. Uh, however, I did notice the hinge was slightly floppy. Let's see if I can show you what I mean. It's it it has a bit of play in the hinge, like it'll uh, it has a little bit of flex there. But I think that's just from use. Uh, I tightened up all the screws, and it seems to be fine. However, I made I made a fatal mistake actually with this particular laptop. Let me unplug it here. That's just getting in the way. The latch. <sighs> I think this palm rest was on its last legs when I opened this thing up to tighten the hinges. Uh, because, as you can see, there's a latch here. It doesn't spring back anymore. Because the little spring that was in there isn't in there anymore. <laughs> and I'll explain why. You see, between the latch, this palm rest is where the whole latch mechanism is and over here there's a there's a little post with a hook on it and there's a place for that spring to go that's attached to the whole mechanism for the latch the little hook that was attached to the case itself actually broke when I was taking the palm rest off now I wasn't rough with this at all I took it apart like like I do any other ThinkPad uh, you know, you, you remove all the screws, you work it slowly across the sides, and it's it still broke anyway. So I was blaming myself for this for a while because I thought I was just being stupid and careless. But it turns out that I, th I think this uh, laptop, I think the latch was just used a lot. And uh, that plastic had just weakened over the years because I noticed the clips up here by the uh, bezel were also a little bit bent. So I think somebody had been in this laptop before. Uh, uh, so th th there are signs that somebody had been in this laptop before I was so I think that uh, some careless person before me broke it I thought it was me and maybe it was just super fragile but uh, honestly I think that uh, what happened was the hook on this plastic case just got weakened over the years and when I took the uh, the palm rest off it weakened it enough for it to pop off uh, the piece of plastic I don't have anymore or else I'd show it to you, but that's what happened. So, for now, I have a manual latch. The, la the laptop will still close and latch, but it's kind of a pain in the ass to make it work. As you can see, it doesn't latch by itself, so I have to hold it down and push it back, and it will stay. So, what I've done to rectify that situation is I've ordered a new palm rest. Uh, the palm rest I ordered does not have the, um, the, the fingerprint reader in it, so I'll be losing the fingerprint reader, but honestly, I never, ever use fingerprint readers on laptops. I don't even use them on phones yet, so, yeah. Alright, they got some RAM in the mail. It's just a regular Samsung 4 gig stick. I'm gonna stick it in here, and, uh. There you go. I have 8 gigs of RAM now in this laptop. Should be excellent. So now all I need to do is get the palm rest. And uh, I should be good to go. Alright, I got the palm rests in. Here's the new one. As you can see, it's in very good condition. I got a grade A one so the trackpad isn't completely worn out. The buttons are though, which is a bit unusual. Still has all the stickers on it, has everything. I just cleaned it with some alcohol. And it's looking pretty good. Here's the broken one, which actually does look pretty good still. I might try to sell it for parts or repair or something, because it's still in really nice shape. This one has the fingerprint reader. Well, this one doesn't, so I'm losing a fingerprint reader. But honestly, who cares? These things barely work anyway. <laughs> now, now let me show you the part that, I, that broke on this, if I can find it. There it is. This area here. There is a, uh, right here is where a spring would normally go, and right on this side where my fingernail is, is where a, uh, is where a, a hook would be to hold the spring. You can see that on the one that's working, on the one that's good still. See that spring right there? How everything is hooked together? If you look at that on the other one, uh, I still have the spring, but the actual hook that that hooks onto is completely gone. 
It just broke off. It literally broke off when I took the case apart. This one's in much better shape. The uh, the clips here on the back aren't bent down like they are on this one. These don't look bent down, but if you push on them a little bit, they go right down. So this one has seen better days. It still works as a palm rest, but the latch is really what kills it. So this will be going onto the laptop, and then it'll be good to go. All right, the new palm rest has been put on and everything, and laptop looks like it's good to go. So, excellent. Even while I was with the old, I uh, had the old palm rest, I was still using the laptop. And, wow, I'm very impressed with these Sandy Bridge era laptops. This thing is everything I had ex ever hoped a laptop would be. It has the integrated graphics. It has the dedicated Quadra graphics, which... Worked very well with Second Life. Um, th this this thing has been massively impressive. I really like the T420. This laptop, along with the Dell Latitude E6420, is an absolute winner in terms of you know rock solid reliability and uh, uh, performance and zippiness too. Zippiness is an odd thing about some laptops. You can have a you can have one with a really good CPU, really good specs, but it won't feel that zippy because of I guess the chipset maybe. Uh, this one feels extremely zippy, even with just a regular hard drive in it. So, very impressed with this laptop so far. I would recommend this to just about anybody. It's a fantastic computer, along with the E6420. The particular hardware platform that those two laptops are based on, including this one, is an excellent one. Very, 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 very good. I'll be keeping this laptop, I think, for a long time because it's it's powerful enough for me to last years and years. So, this will be my new main laptop, the T420. The battery seems to be pretty good. Um, it's got a new palm rest now. 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, has the dual graphics option. Has the Core i5-2520M. Uh, has everything I want. Uh, I shouldn't have to up upgrade or buy another laptop for years to come. It should be excellent. Uh, cool stuff. So, yeah. Alright, after much toil and trouble with this T420, I think I finally got it the way I like it. It has a new palm rest, it has that one terabyte um, hybrid drive in it, and right now it has a, it has a fresh copy of Windows 7. The moment I heard about that Superfish thing, I just reformatted the machine because it had a Lenovo image on it, and I didn't know which machines were affected, so I just did the safe thing and reformatted. Not that there was anything important on here anyway. But, uh, yeah. That's why you're seeing just a plain Jane desktop. What I wanted to go over before I end this video is the uh, NVIDIA uh, Quadra NVS 4200M in this laptop. I don't see too many T420s with this in it. So I thought I'd uh, cover it a little bit. Uh, the way it works on these newer laptops is you have Intel and you have NVIDIA graphics on board. Uh, when you have Windows installed, it will use it will interchange between the two on the fly. So let's say you start up a program that uses a lot of 3D. Uh, the NVIDIA control panel or the drivers will actually switch on the uh, the uh, NVIDIA GPU and use that. So let's say you start up a game, like let's just use War Thunder as an example. It will call it. It will uh, call to the GPU to be used. Certain programs, though, you do have to specify. Uh, so let's say you install the right driver. This is a very basic driver. This isn't the actual one that I need to use, but you can actually go into the software and uh, specify which programs will trigger the 3D to be on. In, with the NVIDIA or not, which is really, really nice. So it's an on-the-fly type of thing uh, with this. So you could just use Intel entirely if you wanted to. You could go into the BIOS and just shut off uh, the NVIDIA part, uh, which is which is nice, especially if you want to just run a pure Intel Linux machine or something like that. Uh, but I actually did try uh, Linux uh, Ubuntu Mate on here. With the, with the official NVIDIA drivers, and even those do support swapping between Intel and NVIDIA, but it's not on the fly, as far as I can tell. You have to switch it manually, but still, you can do that, and it works. 
which is really cool. So a lot of this laptop, the stuff I've thrown at it, it just plain works and it does it in a way that's convenient and it's just a really, really nice package, especially the one with the Quadra NVS in it. But I only really needed that for, for two reasons and that was Second Life and video editing on the go. So yeah, I mean, I, otherwise I would have bought an Intel one because they're just as good. Uh, HD 3000 is nothing, is, is no slouch at all. So, you know, there you have it. So, overall, I love this laptop. The T420 is a clear winner. Uh, one of Lenovo's best. Uh, and it still has that sort of IBM design language on it, too. One of the last to do so. So it's very good. Very, very good laptop. This is, this is a, uh, this is, this laptop and the, uh, the Dell Lab 2D6420 are clearly good replacements for things like the D the Latitude D630 and the the ThinkPad uh, T61 and other things like that. Uh, clearly a very good s sequel to that, so to speak. Even though it's not a direct successor, it's sort of the new work. In my opinion, it's the Sandy Bridge laptops are the new workhorse laptop that's going to last a lot of us IT people a long time. So overall, I love this laptop. It is incredible. So, yeah, I just thought I'd uh, make a video about this thing. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, I, when I tried out the 3D, the frame rates were pretty decent. Um, I didn't try out any crazy games. I just tried out the stuff I usually use. Uh, and World of T when I had the old image on here, World of Tanks worked fine. War Thunder worked fine. Second Life worked fine. They all got good frame rates. I mean, the Quadra graphics are really not designed for gaming. They're designed for uh, CAD work. Uh, which I think is why it'll do so well for video rendering and things like that, and does well for Second Life too, because Second Life is a similar situation that uh, a CAD rendering uses. But I kind of lost track of what I was saying there. Anyway, uh, yeah, the, T the ThinkPad T420 is a clear winner, and it has really good Linux support, even with uh, the NVIDIA graphics. Uh, it will with NVIDIA graphics anyway, but, you know... It runs Windows very well. Uh, some friends of mine, Video Sand Frontier, uh, has a T420 as well. He runs Windows 8.1 on it, and it runs beautifully on there, and that's awesome, because that means Windows 10 will probably run pretty darn well on these, I'd imagine. I'll be making a video about that when Windows 10 comes out. This will probably be the machine I use to make the video about Windows 10. So... There you have it, folks. That's the uh, ThinkPad T420. It is... Uh, one of Lenovo's best, I think. Uh, so if you're in the market for a Sandy, Br a newer laptop and don't want to spend, you know, six hundred dollars, get one of these on eBay. They're like close to three hundred dollars uh, most of the time. So it's a pretty good deal. They might even be less than that now. I bought this. It's it's March sixth now, so I I probably bought this. I bought this like at the end of January, I think. So <laughs> I've had this a little while now. The prices might have changed. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway. That's the T420, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed seeing a, what I think is going to be the next new legendary laptop. And uh, have a good one, everybody. Ciao. Having a working latch is very nice. <laughs>